sometimes some sometimes when something is presented to you especially when it comes to analyzing either political or geopolitical or international or legal uh, media uh, issues you you ask yourself sometimes are they doing this on purpose do i just not get it am i missing the point am i overreacting am i making too much out of this Am I expecting too much? Do I have a, a hyper stylized sense of what is and isn't normal? A lot of things go through my mind. I always think too that they're trying to sandbag me and gaslight me, that this is all a tad solipsistic, I agree, but it's all just to fool me because I can't, th this can't be happening unless somebody were deliberately doing this on purpose. It's like it's a, it's the work. Well, Kamala Harris was the gift that kept on giving. None of it made any sense. She couldn't she, she couldn't pull 2%. You know her background. I'm not going to go through the whole uh, her provenance uh, with the uh, Willie. It's, it's a long story. I, I don't want that. That's that that I, I think borderlines on sexy or sexist, not sexy. What am I saying? I think that when a woman uh, tends to be the male version of a satyr that uh, you know we we throw things at her. I mean, we 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 talk about her moral uh, deficiencies and the like. But if it's a man, it's a different story. So I kind of stay away from that. But I think we all know the story of her political provenance and where she came from. So to speak. But here's a very, very interesting issue right now, which I want to bring to your attention and your your focus. Uh, many people have suggested, in fact, CNN and others, that the Democratic National Committee, the DNC, has conducted uh, focus groups, which are dangerous, on Kamala Harris. Uh, this is according to a, uh, a CNN report. And the purpose is to, <laughs> to understand why voters don't like her. They actually, they had to have a focus group on this. It's like, I, I, I think it's, it's obvious and we'll show you why. Her approval rating continues to plummet. Uh, it's, it's somewhere in the mid thirties, you know, uh, you, you, you don't, you, <laughs> you, this is, this is barely freezing. You don't want to get around in you know, room temperature, all that stuff. Uh, um, according to, to various polls, this is uh, an historic low for the vice presidency. And she spent, as you were saying, the first three years in office struggling with, with terrible headlines. Remember, the, the vice president, for the most part, is really not a bad source. I mean, bad, where, where you thought, well, I mean... You know, Agnew, nattering nabobs of negativism to use the sapphire thing. He, he got rid of him. Nobody liked him. Uh, Dan Quayle. Remember, we thought that Dan Quayle, I thought Dan Quayle was an idiot. He couldn't spell potato or whatever. I mean, he wasn't bad. He just wasn't there. You know, he, he wasn't a proverbial warm bucket of piss, as uh, Mr. Gardner said. In any event, but some Democratic voters now are, 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 saying that Kamala Harris has been better at talking about things than Biden, specifically uh, guns, student loans, uh, Israel, Gaza. Let me say this again. Some voters say that she has been better. Do you know how bad the, 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 the issue is not her, it's him. So Biden and his campaign aides are continuing to, as they say, signal and, and indicate frustration with Harris as she tries to uh, advance and break out on key issues uh, during this uh, very important campaign. So the White House was, quote, fuming, fuming at her and her team, according to this report, after she... Uh, try to emphasize her position, her her understanding, her perspective on an immediate ceasefire in Gaza 
et cetera, et cetera, even though her position was basically identical to that of Biden's. And the report also was indicating that that Biden and his aides and his uh, his confederates and the like uh, were um, annoyed by the idea that they should somehow use Harris more, lean on her, uh, call her into into play more. Uh, and it's just absurd. So to make a long story short, people are asking, why? Why do you think? What are the reasons? What are some of the problems with Kamala Harris? What might be some of the what might be some of the sticking points that they might have regarding her? L- let, let me start off with the obvious. And we have to do this because All of this is a waste of time unless we look at the obvious. And this is something which is extremely critical. This is something called the obvious. Let's let's start with this. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? (laughs) You exist in the of all in which you live and what came before you. One more time. One more time. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> you exist in the context. In the context. Of all in which you live and what came before you. You 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 exist you in the context you... of all in which you live. You see, you know, uh, it, it, you, you can't find fault with that per se. But, but the idea is that you shouldn't be worried about kind of uh, uh, polls and focus polls. Get rid of her. If you must have a black woman, if that is, if if for some reason, which I think is absurd, I think that's racist, get Stacey Abrams, get anybody, anybody, Lori Lightfoot. Well, let me stop there. Beetlejuice, no. There's something that is so phenomenally fascinating about when whenever she dares speak. This is this is what I find so interesting. It's it's when she gets deep. This is when you, this is, again, you don't need a folk. Look, you can send me the money. Tell her not to be funny and tell her not to be deep. So what's the difference between deep and funny? I don't know, but she should just stay away from it at all costs. Tell me what she's saying here. And be unburdened by what has been, you know? What can be. Let me try this again. I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been. Okay. She makes you, she does make you stop and think because you're thinking, you know, I want to give her a chance to be unburdened. You know, what can be unburdened by what has been. What okay. This what can is the- be unburdened by what has been. What can be okay. unburdened, unburdened by what has been. What can be. Let me guess what can be unburdened by what was unburdened by what has been what or what has been okay we can see what we believe can be unburdened by what has been what (laughs) can be unburdened by what has been what can be unburdened by what has been what can be unburdened by what has been who we can be yes Unburdened by who we have been. What can be unburdened by what has been. This, this, Where we can be. Un- but by, by the way, remember, this is her This is her moment. This is her um, ask not and the only thing we have to fear. You would think somewhere along the line, somebody would say, let's come up with something else. That was good. You mastered that one. But we've only said it like a thousand times. But that's really not the problem. That's not the problem, and you know what the problem is. And there is something which is, which is a, a subject which which I want to address uh, foremost. And uh, let me see if I can do this. First of all, let me start off by saying I am not a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a neurologist, but I am a self-appointed expert. For purposes of this, I am. I am my own expert. I am an expert and more of an expert than most of the clowns you will see on TV because I have spent for the entire period of my life, I have spent my time um, studying uh, aberrant or aberrant behavior, depending upon where you're from, uh, schizophrenia, 
a psychosis, serial killing, depraved paraphilia. If it is demented, I'm there. Because you don't know what normal is unless you know what abnormal is. And when it comes to laughing, laughing is one of those things that can be a nervous habit. It can be mockery. Like, <laughs> When you're laughing at somebody who's, if you, if somebody's fallen down, they've hurt themselves and you're laughing. I, I, yeah, that's laughing, but it's not, it's, there's something demented, something depraved about that. There's wonderful, there's these, uh, uh psychotic uh, behaviors called hebephrenia, which is this kind of like this disjointed schizophrenic laughing pseudo bulbar affect. Um, very complicated. Witzel sucked. Witzel sucked. Uh, again, a uh, uh, this excessive uh, laughing, making puns, inappropriate sexual humor. You know, leave it to the Germans to come up with some neurological condition for laughing too much. But I've always noticed how laughing is can be, especially when it's a crutch to cover up for something, like a paucity of mentation, like a dearth, a diminishment amount of, of, of intellect. It's a cover-up. Maybe a long time ago, it was conceived as some form of a, oh, I don't know, some, some means of showing I'm with you, you know, uh, I, I don't know. But very rarely, do we see somebody who so quickly, in fact, let me ask you something. Do you know anybody that you've ever known in any context, in any aspect, in, every, in any framework, in, 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 in any corner of your life where they have laughed this much? Ask yourself. <laughs> wow. Wow. Poor hubby. Poor hubby. <laughs> 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 and by the way, it, it's 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 not the laughing per se; it's the gyrations, the the spasmodic, paroxysmal, cachinations, guffaws, chortles, screaming almost climactic it's not it's not just laughing it's 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 almost anger or fear or something hidden masked behind the bleat <laughs> <laughs and by the way you must always notice the degree of in the 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 uncomfortable nature of the people around even colbert who by the way is as funny as stillbirth even he's thinking um it's it's you you're waiting for it because it it's not only is it unexpected it's undeserved and it's never commensurate with the degree of humor that the particular uh event um warrants <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to sell right there, okay. <laughs> even Ellen, who by the way is the meanest person from what I hear, even she's thinking, I'm really trying. I'm really trying. <laughs> look at that. Did, I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> that look of complete. Now this deserves a close-up. Oh, no, no, no. This deserves a close-up. This is, these are two of the most miserable people you will ever meet. Not so much Joe. Joe is, Joe doesn't know what he wants to be, but meager Brzezinski or Zika, the Zika virus. Meager and Joe, meager as in meager, minor, de minimis. Uh, two of the most unfunny, un, unreal, plastic, plasticine, ersatz, Artificial, disconnected, untethered, unattached, and I'm 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 doing kind of what, what she's doing. What we, not what we were, but what we have been, or 
Watch their faces. Um, <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> she's still got a sense of humor. <laughs> still got a sense of humor. Meager, devoid of any humor, trying her best to say, what do I do with this? What do I do with this? <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> this is Kimmel. I'm trying. I, I think in, in New Hampshire. I'm really here. trying here. <laughs> you know when you you got to ask yourself when you have these many clips, and these are these are just a a just a few. When you have these many clips, you have to ask yourself. This is this is this isn't funny. Oh, it's Brad Grant. <laughs> <laughs> do you see? Do you see Colbert right there? You see Colbert? Do you see his face? He's like saying, "I don't know what the hell to do with it." <laughs> okay. There's <laughs> Lara Lara Soldado. Okay. All right. Get me out of here. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> joining us now. From New York. Okay. Now have because you'll you'll need some help. Maybe maybe you can have maybe you can have um I over the top. Disconnected. And by the way, this is. I'm. Um, by the way, uh, I'm going to send a bill to the DNC. You you don't need any any focus group. Uh, you want some more? <laughs> no. Uh, you know, may, maybe maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Stop right now. Ask yourself: Did you ever think it was this bad? I mean, you knew it was bad, right? But did you ever? Did you ever? I'm I'm I'm, I'm serious. I'm not saying this just for the just for the purpose of my own um, theater uh, art of sorts, but did you ever think it was this bad? <laughs> and no, and and nobody ever said to her, "Stop this." Seriously, we don't know anybody. On the planet. Think about this. Nobody. No, nobody who's ever shown this affectation. <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> so let's do this. <laughs> All right, that's enough. You gotta ask yourself this question. The Democrats have some of the smartest people. I'm sorry, some of the smartest people that you've ever imagined or known, who are stuck with. And as I as I as I write this, as I prepare this, it's 197 days until the election. Okay. Now, don't you think somebody would say, "We've got a lot of good people." I still submit to you that Gavin Newsom will come in at the last minute, that something will happen to Joe. Nothing bad. He'll, he'll, um, maybe he'll get COVID five or some Omicron variant or something, whatever. And, and people will say, oh, thank God, because he is just, it's not fair anymore. It's not fair. If, if you saw him in, at the Wawa in uh, Philly, oh my God. I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was bad. It, it was bad. So, you know, he, and you can bring in, and also Gretchen Whitmer or somebody along those lines, believe it or not, I, I, I know you may not agree with this, but, or, or if you must have, if you are again, again, if you are still um, forced to uh, use the African American demographic, fine. There are so many others, and I still say Stacey Abrams. I think can do the job. Very, very, very uh, adept, very lucid, very smart, able to to describe and to explain the uh, the particular things here. But this, how does this happen? How did these people, so ostensibly smart? 
so in the fight for their life, get to this point with these two people? And I keep thinking, am I missing something? Is it on purpose? Is it? And, and then I start second guessing and I start contriving all kinds of weird, uh, what you might say, conspiratorial machinations. So it's very simple. Lose Kamala. Nobody, but nobody likes her. Nobody questions her. Her, her, well, her sincerity maybe, but um, nobody um, uh, feels that she provides a particular outlook or a particular platform that nobody else can do. I mean, it, it's time. But look, I, I, if, if you're maybe throwing in the towel and sandbagging and basically helping Trump, all the better. I mean, all the better. But you think to yourself, at this point, how can this be? Thanks for watching. I hope you didn't get sick watching that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this. Please subscribe. Please make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that little bell to notif to, to be notified of, of new videos and the like. And comment, dear friends. Comment, comment, comment as you as you see fit.